Hi friends, my name is Mackenzie, also known as M to the Third on Instagram, Ravelry, and YouTube, and this is episode 15 of the M to the Third knitting podcast, which is super exciting. I am on an almost two week vacation from work, which is super nice. Um, I do have family coming on Christmas, which I'm so excited about. We haven't ever like strayed from our Christmas plans my entire life. So the fact that they're all coming to Boston and um, changing how we celebrate Christmas Day is really fun and exciting and I'm stoked to have them here. So in preparation for that I wanted to record so I didn't leave you um, hanging until next year. <laughs> and I do miss recording when I don't uh, get a chance to but I've had a very hectic uh, last month. So I recorded right before um, Thanksgiving and right before me and Kay were headed to LA for the holidays. So that was a ton of fun. The weather was not California great, but like much nicer than here. And then we had a snowstorm in Boston, the first snowstorm of the year. It was like two days of quite a bit of snow and we were like in a hot tub in California. <laughs> so it was um, it was a little tough to come back and then like get back to work and I got so sick. Um, <clears throat> I usually, when I was in college, I would get like one cold every six months, usually towards the end of the semester. Um, I think that's just how being stressed out, being in like basically like a germ factory happens and so since I'm now working on a college campus again I'm like of course I would <laughs> get sick like this. I had been fighting something off but it hadn't fully like descended and then I think like being on a plane, being around kids at home, it just really it just kicked me over the ledge. So I had a pretty bad cough. I still have like a little bit of stuff going on but um <clears throat> I luckily recovered pretty quick. I like had the opportunity to rest for a few days. So yeah. Um, yeah. So I got back. Okay. Let me, let me think about how I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I should think about this before I start recording, but I don't know. I don't. Um, <clears throat> so I wanted to talk about some older finished objects um, because I have a bunch of like Christmassy type stuff that I've put up recently and I thought you might be interested in seeing those and I have some socks that I have mended. Um, I did post some photos on Instagram so but I like to give you a little bit more of a story here and then I have a bunch of whips that I'm working on. I just brought a sock project with me and I did finish that throughout the course of my vacation so that was nice and then I came back and as much as I wanted to like dive headfirst into just like focusing on knitting that sweater I was like Christmas presents so the last month since I've been back from vacation um, has really been me doing one thing and I'm a little over it <laughs> I'll explain that in a minute but it's almost done and then I can do some like very serious selfish knitting. So um, yeah, that's that story. So I'm gonna start off by talking about socks because I have a lot of sock projects and I feel like I talked a lot about socks in the last couple of videos, but it's just like very on my mind. Um, so the last, so two years ago in 2017, I knit one pair of socks Per month which didn't really <laughs> work out like that it was just like a 12 pair of sock thing um, you can see all of those projects on my Ravelry which is linked below and I did enjoy kind of the challenge of it I tried not to just make vanilla socks which 
are really my favorite ones. Like I just like having them because they're portable. I can like knit on them. I can not have to think about it at all and just like get started knitting on them. Um, so I usually just always have a sock project in my bag no matter what. I think this is the case for a lot of people. Um, and last week, or last week, last episode, I talked a little bit about the struggle that I've been having with getting gauge properly and um, just kind of this like epiphany I've I've had about slowing down on my sock knitting to make sure that they are products that I'm happy with and that will last a long time because ultimately that makes them more sustainable, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So this year I'm actually on track for another 12 pairs, one-ish per month. So the last five pairs I've done very recently. Okay, so <laughs> pair number eight is out of the Retrosaria Mondim yarn, and I showed these off. So <clears throat> I haven't made any progress, but I just kind of want to show... So I have one finished, and I have started the heel flap on the other one. And so these I am knitting on <clears throat> size zero needles. Yeah, I mean, you've seen these. I've shown them off many a time. <clears throat> and the fabric is so dense. So I finally was like, I keep looking at patterns for socks and looking at the stitch count and like a lot of them are going for a US on a US one needle aiming for eight stitches per inch and I realized that this is 10 stitches per inch which is why it's been hurting my hand so much I think I I can't remember if I talked about this exactly so um, in the last episode, so I'm sorry if, sorry if I'm repeating myself, but so this is 10 stitches per inch, which is essentially bulletproof. <laughs> it's super dense, but they're like the best fitting socks I've ever made. So I knit this pair out of Urso, I don't speak French, Urso Yarn Company um, from Canada and it is their base that is non-superwash. I mean, this yarn is so stunning. It feels beautiful. I love the color. And I knit this while I was on the plane. And it is um, Melody Hoffman's pattern, Into the Woods. I, it's not blocked yet, but look at these little trees. They're truly amazing. Um, so I knit this whole thing while I was on vacation. I finished the toe on the plane back. So I really like did it perfectly. These are eight stitches per inch. This is like the gauge that socks are most of the time um, that I have seen told to be. And these huge socks are like seven and a half oh no I'm sorry six and a half to seven stitches per inch and these are ones that um so like I talked about I I switch so when I my brain okay when I first started knitting I was a thrower that's how I learned to knit and I sort of progressed naturally into being a flicker which I didn't even know was the terminology until earlier this year, where I kind of hold the yarn and just like go like this, but I'm still throwing with my right hand. Um, I taught myself about five or six years ago to knit Continental and became a picker and have really, and then on top of that started doing the Norwegian Pearl. So I'm a very fast knitter. Um, I mostly knit Continental. And what happened when I made this progression was that my stitches loosened up quite, quite significantly. 
And so this was the first sock that I knit after making this switch. And this is like my tried and true method that I had done for years when I was just flicking. And it turned out very big. I still wear them and they're very comfy, but it, I was like, oh, this is like too loose on my foot. And so I've been kind of in this like frustrating learning curve because I felt like I had the knowledge, I had figured it out, and then I basically everything I thought I knew was right was wrong. <laughs> um, so I knit, I've knit a ton of socks since then, like loads of socks. Um, and recently I realized that when I'm knitting socks that I should just go back to flicking with my right hand. This is a very long drawn out story for no reason. So I have switched this, the pair of socks that are bulletproof, the Mondim are on a US zero and that's 10 stitches per inch, which is nuts and no one should do that. And the Into the Wood socks were on a US one, also flicking, and those turned out basically perfect. And obviously this is also contingent on yarn. Neither of these are superwash, so they're a little bit more plump than a superwash yarn would be. So I think that if I was doing superwash, it would be best to do the zero. And then if I'm doing non superwash, it's best to do the one. So again, this is all me learning and kind of figuring it out. I am also very aware that that rules, there's so many different variables that sometimes rules don't work all the time, but it just makes it a little easier, especially because for so long socks have been my like, not having to think about project that like, I'm thinking about them a lot right now. And so when I was in, um, when I was in California, I, my dad and I have, when I was in high school, our basically like tradition was going to get coffee and going to Barnes and Noble. <laughs> and I mean, Barnes and Noble has like a smell. I think they like spray a perfume on all of their books or something. And I swear every single one smells the same. I also say this about Joann's and like, it's not like, necessarily a pleasant smell, but it just makes me so nostalgic. It's like, I don't go to Barnes and Noble, like, and yet there I was and I bought a bunch of books. <laughs> so, um, in me thinking about all of this sock madness, um, I picked up a classic book which is Clara Park's Book of Socks. Um, so I've never read it before and I just, it was there, it was like, you know, you get a discount. My parents have the Barnes and Noble thing, so we got a discount and I just kind of spent some time with it. I haven't completely gone through it all. It is a lot of patterns, which is nice. Um, you know, this is just like one of the classics, I feel like. and. I was like, yeah, I'll add that to my library, especially because I'm thinking about it so much. So yeah, I just, I mean, I'm really trying to like crack the code. And this is also why I, um, this is also very much why I like baking pie is because there's not one way to do things. Sometimes the rules like don't apply. It's very like, it's sort of intuition. It's sort of knowledge and yet it can still go wrong. <laughs> like it's just practice, I guess. And how many socks can we knit in a year? Even 12 was a stretch. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. It's just been, I'm like, this is why I'm the way that I am because I sort of get caught up on a specific like problem if you will and I just want to like solve it and the fact that I have knit so many socks even in the last like month is like kind of blowing my mind. All of this leading into the Christmas presents that I've been knitting. Um, the recipients know that this is happening so I don't feel 
bad like talking about it and they might see it and that's fine. Um, I am knitting my mom, my grandma, and my sister, who are three of the five coming to Boston, uh, pairs of ankle socks that are in a Christmas colorway. I talked about this yarn when I got it, which was, I think, in September. It's West Yorkshire Spinner's, like, Christmas colorway called Fairy Lights, and let me show you what's going on. So my initial plans with these four skeins that I bought was to send it to Elba in LA who has cranked tubes of sock yarn for me before and um, I will link her shop below. It's totally tubular socks which is like so California. I love it. And <clears throat> that was my plan was to send all of the skeins and make socks you know just have to do the cuff the heel and the toe for like everyone it was gonna I was gonna end up doing like seven pairs possibly nine pairs and that's why I bought so much yarn I just kept talking myself out of actually going through with sending it which is like silly I don't know why I just I don't know I just and then all of a sudden it felt too late especially coming back from California, which is like silly because that's where I would have been sending it. But anyway, especially coming back and then just being like, oh, there's like less than a month until Christmas because Thanksgiving was so late this year. Um, so I just was like, okay, I'm going to start knitting ankle socks and that's what's happening. So I have knit four and a half socks at this point and this is how I package socks when I am giving them as a gift. I They're little cupcake um, boxes and they're craft paper and this is cellophane so all of it is compostable which is really nice. I know I'm still like using single-use packaging but I know. I've had these boxes for like a long time so that's what I use and it shows off the little pattern so that's what the fairy lights self striping self patterning socks look like so this is I'm doing contrasting cuff and toe they're very cute it also makes such a big difference blocking this um, yarn I'll show you so I ran out or like I'm not convinced that I have enough of this like red orange color so the last pair that I'm doing are in white but yeah so this is where I'm at and I did this cuff a little bit bigger on this one but see how let me see it it's very like cinched up and then when it's blocked it really like blooms quite a bit yeah so I am doing these on a one mostly flicking and I think they've turned out really great they fit me well um we're all basically the same size and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get three pairs of ankle socks out of this one skein which is wild so one of them I ended up selling to Melissa because we had our knit night secret Santa gift exchange which was super fun everyone was very creative it was super fun I love my gifts thank you Monica <laughs> and yeah we just had a lot of cookies I made a really intense lasagna that was delicious and we just kind of hung out and knit for several hours so my kind of holiday party to be honest <laughs> 11 and a half socks sitting next to me right now, which is like maybe too many socks. But I mean, also you could argue you can never have enough. And since I keep knitting them, I guess you can't. Um, it's a lot. So since we're talking about Christmas, I thought I would also show off some of the projects that I have knit slash made um, over the last few years to help with decorating. I. I kind of have this policy of just making like a couple things and purchasing a couple of things a year and then it sort of gradually accumulates 
and right now I'm very happy. It's like very minimal, but also like definitely holiday-y. I'm gonna show you first the stocking. So I have four of these, they're all different colors. Um, I adapted them from a free pattern that was on Ravelry and they are on my Ravelry, my Ravelry project page and I'll link to the pattern. And I've done four of them and I'll insert a little clip of all of them hanging above my fireplace. I also created this like detachable loop. I don't, this was, I think that I did this myself. I don't think this was part of the pattern. Um, but I added these antler buttons to it. Let's see if it'll focus. Um, and then I created these little loops that is basically like, uh, maybe like five rows of stock in it with a buttonhole. And then I did I cord and then another buttonhole on the other end so that it's like flat where it grabs onto the button and then you can just pop it on. Yeah, they're super cute. I knit them all out of Brooklyn Tweed and a Cormo that I had had. Yeah, I have all four of these stockings and I love them a lot. I initially made four because it was me and Kay, our roommate Aaron and Maple, um, but now we have four and it's basically just Kay and me and like sometimes I put it in the stocking for Maple but the first year we did it we put a treat and she started barking at the stocking before Christmas and it was wrapped and everything <laughs> I don't know how but she was just barking incessantly at the stocking so uh she's getting a heated dog bed from Santa this year so the other little thing these are actually ornaments, and they are from Katrinkles, who I'm sure you know about. So every year I buy one of these for Kay and one of these for me, and we get the same um, object. So 2017 I got little sweaters, and that's the one that I did, and this is the Hanukkah one that Kay did. They're so cute. Um, and then Kay, I had already glued mine on, but Kay had the foresight to put the date in the back of theirs. It says, yeah, 17. Um, so last year we both made hats and embroidered them. They're on the tree. And then this year when I was at Rhinebeck, I got um, mittens. So we both have a pair of mittens that we've been slowly working on. And it's been... It's just like a nice thing that we both do together um, during holiday time and then we have kind of a memento for each year. So yeah, I really enjoy, really enjoy doing that. And then I think the last thing I'm gonna talk about is a finished object that I don't think I've mentioned possibly even on, uh, I think I post a very early photo of it a couple years ago on Ravelry. But um, I started this blanket a couple years ago. It's crochet and it's my first ever crochet project. So it is Attic 24's like rectangle granny square blanket. It's ginormous. And basically how this started was that I went I was going through all the little ends of sock yarn that I had accumulated, you know, and other projects that I had finished. And I just noticed that I had a ton of purple. Um, so it started kind of in the center there. And I was like, okay, well maybe I can do granny squares. And then I found this um, free pattern for just basically the center that was a longer granny square beginning than just doing like a square. So it made it a rectangle instead of a square. And I hadn't really, I had, I've dabbled in crochet before this blanket, but I had never really gotten into it. So 
my like tension wasn't great. Um, but since I had started knitting Continental, it was easier to crochet because it's it just works better for me. So I started this with just some purple yarn I had and I just grew it and what I had a lot of fun with because it's two strands of fingering held at the same time. And what I ended up having a lot of fun with was playing with color because in a lot of my knitting projects I don't get the chance to play with color that's kind of also why I enjoy quilting on occasion because it really is more color and pattern based but this was just like it felt more like painting <laughs> doing this blanket because I could kind of not like make it up as I go but I was like oh like I'll add a little bit of this into it and a little bit of that and I basically had it in a basket working on it for a year and I did end up buying skeins of yarn to supplement my ends but it was a great stash buster um, and I just like totally had fun with it. So <clears throat> again it took me about a year. I actually just washed it and it's it's like very hefty. It's like very it, it's just such a good blanket. That being said purple is not the color scheme in like any of the rooms in our house so it does live in the living room and we Kay and I and Maple all use it and love it but it just like doesn't really go with what we have going on so I wanted to make one using scraps again but that was a little more intentional of like the color scheme that we're going with so I started this one a little bit ago I actually haven't worked on it for a minute but I went through all my scraps and what I wanted to do because our colors are kind of like light pink emerald green and orange what I wanted to do was make a blanket that kind of faded into those colors so again most of this is stash actually all of this so far that I've used is stash yarn um, I started right here in the center and I'm gonna ombre out into some nice uh, kind of like mauve colors and then and I'm going to like end with a big thick border of this um, owl from Quince and Co. I have several skeins of this and I actually got this from gather here when my mom was in town we went and the combination of my purchases and her purchases filled up my punch card and they give you 25 dollars if you fill out a punch card so i bought i don't know how many of these like three or four of these um because i filled out that punch card so that was kind of a nice perk of starting a project with my mom um so yeah, I've just been like picking it up as I've been going. Um, I haven't worked on it because I, I haven't been working on anything except for uh, socks for Christmas. So, but it's kind of a fun, again, it's like very much playing with color and not so much working, uh, worrying about the technique of what I'm doing. So yeah, it's just a different way of kind of approaching my crafts, which I really enjoy. Um, yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot. I've just been, it didn't feel like a lot when I was getting ready to record, but now I feel like I've just been, it was a lot of stuff that I was talking about. <laughs> uh, so I've talked about knitting <laughs> and now I kind of want to talk about like some housekeeping businessy type of stuff. In the last video I announced that I was starting a Slack channel and what Slack is, I'll explain it just very briefly again if you want more information uh, please go watch the last video I posted which I'll link up here. Um, Slack is basically like an instant messaging platform that multiple people can join and there's different group chat functionality in it 
and then there's different subtopics. So there's like a general board that everyone can be part of and that history is kind of archived. And then there are different subgenres that can be created. So there's a good number of us who have been active on it since the last episode aired about a month ago. Um, I realize that, so basically I can create a link that in, that anyone can click to sign up to be part of the Slack channel. It does expire, I think, after like 10 to 14 days. And initially I was like, oh, I'm going to have to go update it frequently. But I have decided that I will just post the link every time I post a video, which lately has been once a month. And then there will be kind of a two week period for people to join and then it'll expire. Um, but I like this <laughs> because it kind of gives me a chance to kind of get to know who has joined the group and, you know, have some conversations and yeah, just generally like have meaningful interactions with the people who are part of this podcasting community. Um, which has been really amazing. So, um, if you're interested in joining our Slack channel, it's totally optional. It's just a little bit more engagement. Um, you know, I kind of post behind the scene photos, but a lot of other people are involved too. We have a whole list of book recommendations. We have, um, yeah, just like various conversations about, uh, you know, ideas I have for like, community building activities that I would love you to weigh in on. Um, yeah, there's just like a lot of options for getting more out of this podcast than just, uh, you know, once a month hearing from me or following me on Instagram. So again, if you're interested, I will post a new link down below, which should be active for two weeks after this video goes live. And please feel free to join. I would truly love to have you in there. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is that I've been chatting about this in the Slack channel and thinking about it a lot for myself. And I want to host a year long make along for 2020. Um, but I also don't want it to be very like, I don't want there to be a lot of rules. I kind of just want it, I want there to be the opportunity for us to have a community making together and to be more intentional about making, um, thinking about the sustainability of the materials that we're using, thinking about um, how much money and time is going into it, and, you know, thinking about size inclusivity and just general equity with designers and so on and so forth. Um, and like thinking about doing these intentionally in a way that creates a sustainable wardrobe, like on a whole. So I've been thinking a lot about what it's going to encompass to get people to engage, um, but also to not make it feel like there's so many rules and deadlines because I don't like to operate like that. Um, and I don't think other people do either. So I will do a separate video about that for the beginning of the year to kind of introduce it and um, share with you what decisions I've kind of made about it. But please keep your eyes and ears open. And if you have any ideas about, you know, what, like, if you've been like, oh, that knit along sounds fun, or that make along sounds fun, but I don't want to be part of it for X, Y, and Z reason, I would really love to hear um, about why you have or have not participated in other hosted sew along, make along, outfit alongs, etc, etc. Um, yeah, because I'm just, I've been thinking about it a lot, and uh, maybe you have some insight that I haven't thought of. Um, yeah, I think that's where I'm going to leave it today um, so that I can edit this and get it out to you. Please subscribe and like this video if you haven't already, and I hope you have a great holiday season, winter break, summer break, and um, I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>